Thank you, Melod CJ. Melod, the matter before court in that litigation with documents was a contract of sale of land. Documented, people purported to sign as witnesses. I don't know whether they're genuine or not. There's no way the judicial officer would have known whether they're genuine or not until it was challenged. If it was challenged, then the judicial officer would have had to make a decision one way or the other. The court issued summons before the judicial officer who was grilled had taken over the file. The court, the preceding judicial officer, issued summons to the defendant, the now famous old lady. The court issued summons to her twice. The first time service was taken by counsel for the plaintiff, the chambers of the counsel for the plaintiff, but the court was not satisfied. The court now sent a court clerk who took the summons and took pictures of the lady receiving the summons. <laughs> and when the judicial officer was satisfied that this lady had been effectively served, then the court proceeded. The court went to inspect the land in dispute. In this case, it didn't have to go. It didn't have to go. But the judicial officer, where is this judicial officer? Where are you? Stand up. <laughs> the judicial officer exercised due diligence and went to the land and met this lady and said, please, come to court and defend yourself. Granting this lady an opportunity which she threw away. The decision was made. Whether the decision, you can sit down, whether the decision was right or wrong, the judicial officer made a decision. As it was his duty to do. There was no appeal, there was no action. And the law took its course. After this, the public relations officer of the judiciary was called, I think, on a Sunday. The right honorable prime minister would go to Mango Court to pay off a date for which the judgment data had been committed to civil prison. <clears throat> is this my water? Okay, it is, eh? <clears throat> for which the, the judgment data was committed to civil prison. He dutifully informed the chief magistrate to prepare the file because the right honorable prime minister was coming for that. That was, to me, that was commendable. That a leader would take action to come and say, look, I'm paying off. If another time I had the means, I would also pay off for somebody. <laughs> but now, what took place in court that Monday was unfortunate, unacceptable, a, a total outrage. If the purpose of going to court was what took place, I think the right honorable prime minister should have known this country has got a chief justice, should have called. <laughs> she should have known, I believe she reads the constitution and she understands. There is a principal judge who is in charge of the high court and the magistrate's court. There is the chief registrar whom they called and gave 
a reason beyond which they acted. I would be failing in my duty as head of the judiciary to defend judicial officers if I kept quiet. I would be failing in my duty as a Ugandan to see this type of abuse of the Constitution and I keep quiet. I would not be forgiven for keeping quiet. But I also want to say this. Because we take special oath never to fear, don't be intimidated by whomsoever who comes to your court or tries to intimidate you to do the things against your oath. Don't be intimidated. <laughs> because we take the oath not to favor. Do not favor any person because that person is good to you. If they are not right, put your pen to paper and say, well, you're such a nice person, but you are against the law. Because you took oath never to malice anyone. Do not malice anyone who offends you when it comes to your judicial work. And it is my pleasure now to declare the annual workshop for registrars and magistrates officially open. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. Let us stand up and appreciate his Lordship. We can resume our seats.